Hi, I'm Matt Presti. We're continuing with our question and answer with Dale Pond. And we were just talking about machines and man and where man's chosen to go or has been led to in his view of machinery and, and uh, as well as his view of himself. Um, I want to get a little more into the dinosphere. You built five. Tell us a little bit about those five, any effects you witnessed, and what are some of the major differences between the five models? When we built the first one, <clears throat> we had no idea what we were doing. No one had ever seen one. Um, we really didn't know what they looked like. We just had a few black and white photographs. <clears throat> And um, so we set about building this first one, that one, in just raw faith. You know, when we get instructions, we just followed them as best we could. And we just made all these parts, which we didn't, you know, I really didn't know what we were doing. I had never cut metal before. And we thought we were making a free energy machine, just a machine that would put out raw power. That was our... Uh, intent at the time. Mm -hmm. When we had it, after we had it built, I took it to a science engineering fair in Denver in the summer of 96. And I come back from lunch one day, and there's all these women standing around Atlan with their hands out like this towards it, as though they were warming their hands on a fire. Mm -hmm. And they were all very solemnly just standing there. And I thought that was a pretty strange thing to witness. Mm -hmm. And I said, what are you guys doing? And one of the ladies says, we're standing here feeling the love come off this machine. She said it matter-of-factly, sincerely, from her heart, and all the rest of them nodded in agreement with what she just said. And it was like my life passed before my eyes when she said that, because I realized they were feeling this energy, all of them, she chose to call it love, and they all agreed with it. And I would, I hadn't felt anything. I didn't know there was any energy coming off this thing. Hmm. And that began a whole new right turn on this project. I had to find out what she was talking about. I had right. to find out what she was feeling, why she was calling it love, you know, why wasn't I feeling it? All these million questions came up. So I took it to a center in uh, Tulsa, metaphysical center. And we invited the metaphysical community in, and I told these people, you guys are going to be the guinea pigs. I told them about the women, and I said, there's something going on here that I don't have any clue about, but I want to find out about it, and I'm sure some of you are sensitive like those other ones. So we did. We did a whole series of meetings, sessions, and all sorts of things started showing up, just spontaneously, unexpected, and the paradigm just mushroomed. Mm -hmm. Okay, because to account for all these different things we were seeing, such as people were being healed on the physical, emotional, mental, even spiritual healings were happening, and some were happening immediately, some after repeated exposures to this. Mm -hmm. And so I started hitting the books. I, I found every book I could get that had the word love in the title, and I talked to everybody, and we had different people coming in, and, and the paradigm started to form itself together. Um, I took it to a workshop in, in, in one day and, and people started feeling joyful and spontaneous and excited and happy when they're around these dinosaurs. And that happened at this workshop. There were 15 or 20 people and the place just broke up into this incredible joy. Hmm. And one of the participants walked up to me later and he says, I want one. <laughs> So that was the first one that we made for another party. Right. And it pretty much worked the same way all the way through. Um, people would come up to me and they'd say they want one or they'd call me and say how much and we'd be off making the next dinosaur. And some of the things that other people have experienced, uh, one lady's using hers in a informal um, clinical setting. Mm -hmm. She has a medical background. 
and um, she has reported extraordinary, even far more than I've really? seen. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. And she can't say enough about it. I've, uh, and another guy who bought his, he was very one of the, probably the most spiritually developed of all the owners. And uh, he just, he, his awakening just went straight up. Hmm. And he, he, last time I talked to him, it sounded like he was on cloud nine talking on the phone. And, and uh, he was so excited about the beauty of the nature and the whole thing going, you know what that's all about. And he started to wake up. So the dinosaur is like a carrot on a stick. <clears throat> There's so many people out there wanting to solve the energy problem, which is a 3D problem. Mm -hmm. And they, and it is a beautiful machine. It just draws people to it. It's highly attractive. And the engineers want to know about it because they've read about the Keeley stories, and, and they want to know, well, you know, can we can we um, get power from the source, <clears throat> so we can have engineers ready and willing to hear the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the story is about the scalar forces that cause the motion in these dinosaurs. And we've come to learn that the scalar forces are the mind forces. There are no other forces out there that are scalar. It has to be the mind force. Princeton University has proven after 20 years of research that mind force is real. It so does affect matter. It does affect matter. So if Princeton University says it's real, then it's real. Mm -hmm. And we need to do more investigation into it, understand this mind force <coughs> yeah, enough that we can begin to engineer with it. In doing that, however, we have to set aside the 3D materiality and go into this scalar world. Another word for it is spiritual, the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. Because all things spiritual are from the mind whether it's telekinesis or remote viewing or clairvoyance or spoon bending, it all starts with the mind and the heart forces. <clears throat> so uh, the, the, hang, the hanging on part from the robber barons in the past who brought forward this atheistic materialism were, were directly confronting that paradigm. They don't want to hear what we have to say. But because of the circumstances in the world now, they have to bend a little bit and say, wait a minute, what we're doing has no way out. We have to do something different. And this is the only thing on the horizon that's different and has substance behind it. So we're beginning to get audiences, um, PhDs and scientists and engineers are saying, okay, let's set aside the preformed prejudices and the brainwashing and the conditioning. And okay, let's look at this with a fresh mind and open sure. heart. <clears throat> and we're beginning to make some inroads. So there's hope now mm -hmm. that we can leave this barbarianism behind us and move into a more spiritual future. It would be great welcome for much of humanity who's you know, at their wit's end. And, uh, we're, the world has become imbued with hopelessness. Mm -hmm. They don't see a way out. They were taught the materialistic side. Well, the materialistic side has exhausted itself has polluted everything in its reach. And people are saying, well, well what can we do? Show us another way. Show yeah. us a better way. And that's what we're doing. Excellent. So uh, out of the five dinospheres you built, do you have a favorite? The first one. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're, they're, they're not really favorite, but that's the one that's in my face all the time. Sure. And uh, they're all beautiful, and they're all wonderful, and, they're, and they all have these incredible powers. And um, it's just exciting more and more people to begin looking at this and say, wait a minute, how can a machine, you know, a material metallic construct show evidence of consciousness? And, and it's not so foreign to contemplate. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope to uh, spark some viewers to go out and check out more about the dinospheres. And I want to thank you, Dale, for joining us. And I'm sure we'll be doing some more of these. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please write in. And I implore you all to check out the work of Dale Pond and the Dinosphere. It's very interesting stuff. Thank you. Thank you. All right.